Hi, it's Beamer Zen with another video and this time I will be installing this BMW N43 engine back into the car. I got this car a while ago with some engine issues and after some diagnosing I found plenty of bearing material inside of the oil. The oil filter had holes inside so that was a pretty bad sign. After that I've decided to pull the engine out of the car and do a full teardown and during that teardown I found three spun conrod bearings, so the engine was done. I've tried sourcing a good used engine for this car, however they were really expensive or unavailable, so I've decided to go ahead and just rebuild this one. So I replaced the crankshaft and the conrods and a bunch of parts and I have a pretty detailed video series on how to rebuild the BMW N43 engine. And I also have a bunch of other videos on this topic, so check them down in the description and up in the cards. But enough talking, let's get this engine back into the car. I've got the engine on the engine hoist and I have to make sure that it's as close as possible to the balancer because I don't have a lot of clearance here. I've decided to mount the balancer directly through the hole in the hoist Okay, now I can start lowering the engine into the engine bay. Here at the front I have to make sure that the engine clears the AC lines and it looks like it's gonna go well. Now I have to make sure that this support arm clears the lines here and it looks like it's gonna go well. The engine is pretty much in the correct longitudinal position. I have to be careful on the right side because the engine is catching the ECU box a little bit. So I will definitely have to swing it to the other side a little bit. Now I have to get the AC compressor out of the way and on the top side of the engine. Now I'm going to fix the AC compressor with a bolt. Now I'm going to secure the AC line back onto this bracket. But first I have to release the bracket. I can see that I'm pretty close on the right side, so I just need to lower the engine a little bit and then I'll be able to mount it on the engine mount. That took some wiggling, but the support arm is on the mount. So now I can lower the engine a little bit. Now I just need this other support to clear the steering column. Okay, finally. And after some wiggling and back and forth, I did manage to get the engine support onto the mount on the right side. Now I just have to lower the engine a little bit and it's gonna sit right onto the left engine mount. And the engine is finally back in the car. Now I can remove the engine hoist. Now I have to install the nuts and they have to be torqued to 56 Newton meters. Now I'm going to install the rest of the bolts on the AC compressor. They have to be torqued to 23 Newton meters. Next I'm going to reattach the harness box. There are two 10 millimeter bolts that have to be torqued to 10 Newton meters. And I'm going to connect the plug for the AC compressor. Next, connector for the high pressure fuel sensor, vacuum line to the vacuum pump. And I also must not forget to reattach the vacuum line onto the holder. Now I'm going to reconnect all of the plugs in the ECU box and I'm going to start by inserting this carrier plate first. Then I have to sort out this mess here. Now I have to pull out the locking tab from the connector carrier 
and I also have to lift the whole box up a little bit so that it clears here on this side. And now I should be able to install this connector. Next I have to route these two connectors underneath. And I have to plug them in. And now I have to reinstall the grey connector into this connector carrier. Now I have to remove this locking piece and I have to press in the little notches. In goes the grey connector. And now I can put back the locking tab. And now I can reinstall this connector. Everything looks okay, so now I can put back the cover. I have to make sure that the locking tabs are in unlocked position. Now I can lock it down. And I can press down the locking tabs on the front and at the back. Next I have to reconnect the grounding wire at the top. And the nut has to be torqued to 9 newton meters. Now I'm ready to reinstall the cooling system. First I'm going to reconnect these hoses here. First the thermostat and then the expansion tank. First I'm going to install the radiator. It can be quite a pain to get the radiator in. So I'm going to try and show you how I did it. First you have to do the right side and you have to start by tilting the radiator in a little bit. The radiator has to sit on the bracket like this. Then I have to use my other arm to push this bracket towards the radiator so that it catches on the latch. Then I can insert the left side. Now I can install the screw. Both screws only need to be hand tight, or if you really want to be specific, 4.5 Newton meters. Now I'm going to install the outlet pipe for the radiator, and this hose can be a bit tricky to install, so I'm going to use a little bit of soap on the O-rings, and that will help it glide into position. I plan to do a flush of coolant after installation, so I think this will be... Now I can first press in the radiator part. And it clicked, that means that it's locked. And it's locked. Now I can slide back the protective sleeve. I've also installed this spacer here. Next, the fan cowling. It just slides in. There's a latch on the left side and two latches on the right side. Now I can install the bolt. And these two only has to be hand tight. Next, the intake hose from the engine to the radiator. And this time I will have to tilt the engine back a little bit. Then I can connect the oil cooler and then the radiator. I will have to use some more soap here. Now it should slide right in. Okay. Then I have to secure the return line and connect it to the expansion tank at the top. And the final hose that I need to attach is here at the junction. Hey, it's me from the future again. Uh, yeah, this hose is not rotated correctly, so it has to go above this hose here. So I'm going to remove it and reroute it. Much better. And now I can also clip it with this plastic hanger here. And there it is. 
Next I have to reinstall this little bracket that holds the two front hoses. And I have to secure it with a 10 mm nut. And it has to be torqued to 9 newton meters. And I have to reattach the hoses. And the final thing is this plug. And I'm done with the cooling system. Now I'm going to install the plus cable that goes to the alternator and to the starter solenoid. I have to route the cable underneath the other cables and it's easier to just remove the plug here and then insert the terminal. And the nut has to be torqued to 13 newton meters. And finally I reconnect the plug. I'm also going to install this bolt for the holder and I'm going to torque it to 20 newton meters. Now I can reinstall the grounding strap and I'm going to torque it to 19 newton meters. And I'm also going to put back this protection cover. There is another nut at the back. Next I'm going to reconnect the exhaust system to the exhaust manifold. And I'm going to use new nuts. And the nuts have to be torqued to 31 newton meters. I'm going to end the video here and in my next video I'm going to be installing the intake manifold, the alternator and the airbox. And after that I'm going to fill up the system with coolant and try and start the engine for the very first time after the rebuild. I'm dying to see if I did a good job, if the engine will run. It's gonna be interesting. So uh, subscribe, like, keep zen and continue the art of BMW maintenance.